The whistleblower complaint has been released to the public. Uh, some of the stands out is that the whistleblower was not actually in any of these meetings, but based on several accounts uh, from other U.S. officials. And the standout is after the Ukrainian call with the president uh, of the United States and Ukraine uh, is that the whistleblower said the White House sought to lock down all records, which would then imply uh, that there may be something that was really negative. Uh, what's your take so far? What's the legal case here? Uh, I think there's a strong legal case. Okay. You're right to make a distinction between what's political and what's legal. But clearly there was enough evidence, even in the excerpts that were released yesterday, to cry out for, like, we need to see it all. And now we're finding out more about the whistleblower. And the fact that the whistleblower was not present uh, doesn't mean it should be disregarded. What it does okay. mean, it gives the Democrats some ammunition to go, we need to investigate further and get as much information about this as possible. Does it give the Republicans ammunition to say, this is bogus, we're not going to get onto this? Um, no. The impact of yesterday's, uh, uh, which uh, across the spectrum, even on some of the side on the Republican side, was such that this was damaging enough that I think, you know, there will not be that, except on the extreme, you know, pro-president side. Mm -hmm. I don't think there'll be that sort of like disregard this. It's worthless. I think I think we've passed that part. Uh, David Weston, also here, uh, anchor of Balance of Power, he literally called this in a meeting that we had two days ago <laughs> as everyone was dismissing it, like, oh, it's another thing. Trump will get behind it. Uh, well, what are your sources telling you about the significance then uh, of this particular report? Well, I, I mean, the thing that struck me when the transcript came out yesterday was it's actually pretty clear. Mm -hmm. uh, often when you get transcripts are very garbled. It was pretty clear. President Trump said, by the way, I have this other thing I want you to do for me. Mm -hmm. Look into this, uh, which favor. is surprising. A favor. 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 Exactly. He specifically called it a favor, which was which is striking. I didn't expect that. I think what we're really seeing is it's a narrower investigation, but it's going to go faster. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just that everything that President Trump has done. It is, it is right now, including in this whistleblower document that we've just been given, specifically talks about that July 25 conversation with Ukraine. And as Greg Farrell just said, there are two issues here. One is the underlying action. Did the president do something inappropriate? appropriate in raising the son of a political rival with a foreign leader. That's one issue. Another is, after that happened, did he do something inappropriate against the law, actually, the letter of the statute, in trying to keep Congress from knowing about it, and particularly the, the intelligence committees of the House and the Senate? Those are two separate issues. Mm -hmm. uh, even if the underlying thing was not illegal, it's pretty clear that the Intelligence Whistleblower Act required uh, the, the Director of National Intelligence to turn this over to the two intelligence committees within seven days.